Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome back to another Godot tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be covering animatable sprites, or sprite animation. Uh, this actually isn't the way you would animate a sprite in your game, most likely. Uh, it'll work, it's a way of doing it, but this is a way of creating animatable sprites. Don't worry, I'll cover exactly what I'm talking about there at the very end. Uh, and in the next tutorial, we'll be covering animation specifically, uh, which is how you would probably go about doing things. Uh, but in the meantime, we are going to be looking at creating an animatable sprite. That is, a sprite uh, with multiple frames uh, of graphics available to give you the ability to do like a flipbook style animation. Uh, it's going to be a fairly short tutorial. The topic isn't going to take it in incredibly long time to cover. Uh, once again, there is a text-based version of this. It's already live, um, and there's also a link to all of the um, the PNG files I used for this example. So if you want to follow it along exactly as I am, uh, go to GameFromScratch.com and uh, look up the tutorial here for sprite animation uh, in Godot there, and you can get the assets we're using as well as the code example that we're about to create. Uh, okay, without further ado, let me go ahead and uh, I'm just going to create a new, uh, new project here. Uh, call it Sprite Animation and Create. Load that up. So I'm gonna get the uh, the traditional work out of the way. Uh, so first we gotta, hey you bugger! All right. So let's make a node as our root node. Create that. We shall save our scene. New scene is a good name, and we shall set it as the default. I imagine you guys can do this in your sleep by this point. Uh, if you can't, uh, once again, remind you that all of these tutorials assume you have seen the previous tutorial, so I do not recover anything I have done. So if I do something in this tutorial that makes you go, hmm, the hell did he just do? It was probably covered in a previous tutorial, so make sure you go back through them first. Uh, if it isn't, if I cover something and I don't, um, or if I do something but I don't cover it, and I haven't covered it in the past, please let me know in the comments, and I'll make sure that I, uh, I address it somewhat. Uh, so there, we got our scene set up. Now let's go ahead and close this. Uh, so all we're really basically going to do this time is create this animatable sprite. And it's a node. Uh, it's actually called Animated Sprite. It's right here. Uh, just go ahead and add one to your scene. It's uh, positioned just like any other node. Uh, so it has positional information or spatial information. Uh, now the key thing is this guy. Is this your frames collection? This is where um, each individual frame of animation comes from. In this case, I'm actually going to use uh, a sequence of animations that I've already created in my temp folder. As you can see right here, it's just a sequence of images that go together to make a walk cycle. And that's basically it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add all of these images into our project. And we do that with import. Uh, 2D texture. Now if you wanted, of course, you could do this with a sprite sheet. Probably would do this for the sprite sheet. But in this case, uh, I'm just going to use the individual frames because uh, that's what I already have. Uh, so let's navigate to them. They're, as I said, in one of my temp directories. And just grab them all. Nice thing is you can shift click, grab, uh, select multiple, and just go ahead and open them. Uh, default settings are fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll make a folder called frames. Select the root, create folder, focus, frames, and we'll put them there. Choose, now import. All right, so if we go check our file system, you will see we now have a .tex file for each and every uh, frame we just created. So now let's head on back. we got our node. We'll go to Inspector, uh, Animated Sprite Selected. So we go to that frame setting. Uh, we drop it down, and we do a new sprite frames. Uh, so basically, frames is a collection of uh, sprite frames. And now let's go ahead and edit those. It brings up a separate editor, uh, as you can see over here. Uh, it's it's just for uh, doing a sequence of frames of animation, and you just do an open. I'm going to our frames folder, and let's select all of them. Now, the frame is going to be done in the order that they're loaded. Uh, if you need to move them around, uh, you can move them up and down in sequence in case yours aren't organized like mine were. Uh, fortunately, my frames were actually in the same order that they're animated, but if you actually need to move them, uh, you can uh, up and down. Did I just screw that one up? I did, so let's move that back. But if you need to rearrange them, you can. Uh, if you need to add more at the beginning or the end or whatever, or after, before or after the currently selected, you can. Uh, but that's about the extent of it. Uh, you can grab a frame if you wish. All of the frames of our animation are in here, uh, starting from 0 and going to 24, because I had 25 frames total. Uh, you could select an individual one, click X to get rid of it. Uh, that's about the extent of it. And once you're done here, let's just switch on back to our scene, pick our animated sprite. 
And there you go, you can see it automatically grabbed out the first frame. Now this is actually set by this value. So if you'd rather have it be the fourth frame, you can start at the fourth frame if you wish. But we now have an animatable sprite. And that's kind of cool. Uh, we can go ahead now and animate this guy. Um, that's going to involve just a, a simple script. Uh, let's go ahead and attach that to this. Uh, we shall call it... Uh, let's give it a path. Uh, put it in the root. And we shall call it animated sprite script dot good and run that and go ahead and create get rid of all this junk and we're going to do this in the process so on tick so we set process as true like so and obviously we need to implement it so process takes delta as a parameter and now our logic our script logic is going to be fairly simple here. Uh, first, we're going to actually need a variable up here for uh, the amount of time that's elapsed. Uh, set it off to zero to start, like so. And now what we're going to do is each frame, we implement our elapsed time. Uh, oh yeah, no plus equals operators. Equals temp elapsed plus uh, delta. So add the amount of time that's elapsed since the last call to uh, temp elapsed. And what we're going to do is if temp elapsed is greater than a tenth of a second, uh, then we're going to go ahead and get the frame. This gets the currently displayed frame of animation. And we check to see if it is it. Oh, by the way, you don't need to do that self. It's a, it's a habit of mine. Like I've explained that a few times. I don't know why I do it, to be honest. It's completely not needed, especially now that the uh, uh, code completion is a lot better uh, in uh, Godot. You don't need to do these things like you used to have to. Um, so it does a much better job of resolving. Now this mouse over seems to be stuck. There we go. Uh, zero base, so we got to take one away from that. Uh, so basically, we're checking to see if the current frame is the last frame. And if it is... We loop back to zero. So set frame to zero. Otherwise, we now want to uh, so if that set frame as get frame plus one. So logic here is we get the current frame that we're at and we're adding one to it. So basically frame plus plus uh, is our logic and Either way, at the end of our outer lift, uh, so if a tenth of a second has elapsed, we want to start our counter over again. Like so. And that's it. Uh, so once again, uh, we come in. Uh, each time our frame ticks, we add the amount of time elapsed since the last tick to our temp elapsed variable. Uh, if we're if we more than a tenth of a second has elapsed, we move on to the next frame. Uh, oh, sorry. If more than a tenth of a second check ha happens, we check to see if we're at our last frame. If it is, we loop our animation back to the beginning. Otherwise, we move on to the next frame. And we just simply reset our counter. So we'll go ahead and yeah, let's just assume this works. So I'll go ahead, so I'll save this. I believe I set everything all up. So I should just now be able to play it. And I have an error. Uh, what did I do? I didn't if out. Okay. Let's try this again. There we go. And as you can see, an animated sprite. Uh, that's all there is to it. Um, make that a little bit more visible for you. So let's go on back to our sprite object. So as you can see, each individual frame uh, of animation is collected in this frames thing. And this frame value is the currently run frame. Uh, however, you can also you control the animated sprite as one entity. So for example, if we want to scale it or position it, so let's scale it to three times. This applies to all of the frames of animation, not just one. Uh, you can't actually control the, the frames themselves. They're just source images. So you still treat an animated sprite as one entity, so its position, its rotation, its scale, etc. is all done for one. And that, that controls all of the frames that exist within this animation. So there you go. Now you can see a little bit bigger, and we'll go ahead and play that. And there you go. Uh, so if we want to, to increment the speed, obviously we could come back into our script and we could turn this into um, 20th of a second instead. 
and we're going to move faster. And obviously we're walking on the spot. This is not um, the B alt end. Now if you really wanted to, you could add that logic in here as well. Uh, so each tick, 0.5, and you could say uh, set position equals position dot uh, X, I thought. I don't know why that didn't complete. This one, and get position dot Y, like so. Go ahead and run that. And my error occurs. What did I do wrong? Set position, skip position X. Plus one, get position dot y. Set position in base to the expected one. Oh, yeah, that's my bad. Uh, I believe it's a vector. Two. And let's close that out. All right. And as you're seeing, we're also uh, slowly moving. I guess one is not, not sufficient. Let's go with three. And there you go. So you've actually got movement going with your animation as well. So you don't just have to walk on the spot, obviously. Now, this is an option. This is a way you can do your sprite animation. If you want to keep it really simple, uh, this is definitely an option. Now, using the animated sprite, if you have a multi-frame uh, sprite animation exactly what we do, um, it is the class you're going to want to use. The only thing that you're probably going to want to do differently is the way you do animation. This method, this thing I'm doing right here, um, Godot has a much, much, much more elegant animation system built right in multi-channel, multi-layer, keyframed animations from hell. And we're going to see that next. Uh, so this, if you want to keep it simple, this option works. Uh, you could do it entirely in code with, with this type of logic. And as you did see, it, uh, it does what you want. It, it does work. Uh, this is a frame rate independent animation going on. Um, so you can go the code route, but there is a much, much, much more elegant animation system uh, that we're going to see shortly. So stay tuned for the next tutorial for uh, specifically animating. And it's not just sprites, it's animating just about everything in Godot. They've done a really cool job. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that one. Uh, but this was it. I'll give you a quick recap of exactly what we just covered. Uh, so let me just shut that guy down. So. Uh, Basically, you if you want to have multiple frames of animation, you come in, uh, you create an animated sprite node. Uh, animated sprite node has a property called frames. Uh, frames is a collection of sprite frames. We just go ahead and just make a new one and then edit it. Brings up the sprite frame editor. You load in your uh, individual sprite frames to use. Um, and then, well, kind of done, to be honest. Um, you've got a set of properties on here that uh, the key one is... Uh, frame, which is the current index of the frame, uh, and then we go over to our script. Uh, yeah. I really wish they made the exiting of these editors cleaner, or that if there was a close editor thing, because as it stands now, this whole coming over here, selecting out, and then switching over thing is irritating, so I hope they fix that soon. Uh, but anyways, go into scripts. Um, all we're going to do is, on the process, we get the current frame, uh, then we uh, check to see if it is uh, past the total length of frames. If so, we, we roll back by calling set frame on the zeroth frame. Otherwise, we set frame to the next frame in the collection. Uh, get frame uh, returns a number that currently represents the index of the current frame you're dealing with. Um, and that's it. It's a very simple, straightforward process. Uh, so sprite-based animation in Godot is incredibly, incredibly simple. Now, you can do much more complex animation, so stay tuned. We'll be covering that shortly. Uh, thanks very much. Goodbye.